brilliant young minds at the University of Trinidad and Tobago are coming up with innovative inventions, big and small, which can improve different aspects of our daily lives. This morning, a few UTT students are here to showcase their work, accompanied by Professor Rodney Rambley, Dr. Andrea Kneer, and Loris Phillips from the Communication and Information Technology Department at UTT. Folks, welcome to Morning Edition. Well, the studio is filled. <laughs> we did say a few students, but we have some brilliant minds in here, so it's a, a full house. So tell me, um, Professor, let's start with you. What are some of the inventions and innovative ideas that we're going to see here this morning? Well, we are certainly quite involved with uh, very interesting applications involving um, some uh, areas of ICT. One particular area is haptics, um, which uh, Dr. Kane will go over in a little while. We also have uh, some software applications. We have some animations, some, some applications in animation, because ICT uh, covers a very wide spectrum of activities. Yes, yes. So we're going to give you a sample. A sampling of, uh, of some of these various, uh, great yeah. ideas. And, 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 and so all of them, but uh, certainly. Dr. Kinnear, can you tell me uh, what is haptics? Okay, well, good morning and good morning, TNT. Haptics is a sense of touch. So I have a, an example of a haptic device right here. It deals with allowing the user to feel a virtual interface presented. Mm -hmm. And we see this with the Wii, Nintendo Wii. Right. But it's also about the position and the movement in a 3D space. So you see that when you connect uh, Xbox. Right. The idea of haptics is to enhance the interaction. Because we use the eyes, we use ears, but the sense of touch adds to the whole interaction for the user. So it's a more holistic user interface. Right. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And uh, Mr. Loris Phillips, what are some of the um, inventions and creations that we're going to see here? Right. Well, we have a number of students here that will show you some of their final year design projects uh -huh. in our computer engineering program at the University of Trinidad and Tobago. Each graduate must complete a design project. This project basically incorporates all of the teaching and learning that the students would have done throughout the, um, the curriculum of the program. Right. There's a lot of innovation and, and entrepreneurship during the program. And each student must complete a capstone project which brings together all of these innovative ideas. So we're going to see some projects on, again, the haptics device, right. some projects on security, some projects on web applications, and so on. Right. I mean, this is all great work. And, uh, Professor, I'm assuming that, you know, in the context of UTT, and UTT as a relatively young institution, yes. um, UTT has been forging the way forward with regards to a lot of the new software applications and really trying to find yes. innovative means to incorporate this new stuff into our daily lives. Exactly. That is part of our mandate, Hayden. We, um, we not only expose students to material that's going to help them find a job, even though that's certainly a part of our mandate. And they find these jobs in the engineering areas, in the energy sector, the banking, commercial uh, enterprises. However, a major part of our initiative is to allow students to create their own jobs, to f you know, create opportunities for themselves as well as for others. You and see? when you talk about, I'm very interested in the applications. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What are some of the other sectors or industries that can benefit from a lot of these innovative ideas? Well, the networking, the telecommunication sector, mm -hmm. we are very, we have, you know, ICT is a sort of an all-inclusive area. It's not hardcore engineering, it's not computer science, but it's a combination of many different areas mm -hmm. of computing. Mm -hmm. And uh, as such, opportunities are provided for students to um, find employment in the telecommunications area, for example. You're asking about what other areas uh, yes. other than the traditional software development, even though that's a major part of our yeah. thrust as well. And, and Dr. Kinnear, some of your, your past students, I mean, they would have gone through this program before. Um, where have they found employment now that they have graduated from the UTT? Okay, coming out of UTT, they got the traditional jobs where probably like entry level initially. Yes. But within the company, they're growing because they're using the innovation that they learn 
They're using the whole critical thinking skills. Yes. And some are even going on to probably start their own initiatives. Because a big part of UTT is that entrepreneurship. So we have things like the ideas competition and the business plan competition that promotes the whole idea of students starting their own initiative. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Phillips, when um, you encourage students to engage in the application of their knowledge for the sake of creating new businesses and so on, um, how does the university support them beyond the, 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 the graduation point in terms of establishing these businesses and so on? Well, at the University of Trinidad and Tobago, there's an incubator which is set up to help established entrepreneurs and have them set up their businesses and so on. Right. So once students, once graduates come up with a good business plan, a good innovative um, project, the, the UTT business incubator will take it from there and help the students develop these ideas to maturity. And does the university also provide them with funding, um, startup capital to yes, establish the these businesses? Yes, the university provides these services as well, funding and capital and so on. And ongoing uh, technical support yes. in terms of ensuring that the businesses survive the first couple of years yes, and that, that kind of yes, thing? Yes, yes, that is very true. But yeah. this, is a, this is a relatively unknown um, mm -hmm. to the rest of Trinidad and Tobago. I mean, this is fantastic work. Well, one of the differences with the University of Trinidad and Tobago is that our focus is on apart from the engineering, um, the research, innovation, and entrepreneurship. We're an entrepreneurial university. Yes. So we're there to help spawn um, businesses, help um, graduates and so on develop these ideas and take it into the industry. Professor, are there future plans to expand these kinds of programs at the UTT? Oh, absolutely, Hayden. You, you asked Loris about um, whether uh, UTT supports the activity, or, or actually you, you indicated that a lot of the country doesn't know about these activities. Well, yes. we're hoping that uh, this is a forum from which uh, yes. all your viewers will get to understand what we're all about. Yes. Sometimes there are misconceptions about what we do at UTT. Well, we're indicating here that uh, we're into a lot of innovative work, we're into a lot of entrepreneurial activities, and we want students to be aware of the, uh, or potential students to be aware of these events taking place at UTT. The economy of Trinidad and Tobago is going through some tough times in, 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 no in the recent past. <laughs> yes. Has the government been able to provide the financial support to ensure that the UTT can press forward with this kind of people development? We have not noticed any adverse effects of the difficulties, the economic difficulties. I mean, there is always a crunch in funding, but uh, you know, funding isn't um, just so easily provided, for example, for going to present uh, your research findings at conferences, but in exceptional cases, uh, it is provided. For example, Dr. Kinnear just came back uh, two weeks ago from a very prestigious international conference in Vancouver in Canada. Funding was provided for, for that. So. Every case is considered on a case-by-case -case basis. For work that is very innovative and that can help propel our agenda forward internationally, I'm sure that uh, funding will not be withheld for such activities. All right, folks, what we're going to do right now is just about 25 minutes to the hour of 8 o'clock. We're going to take a quick break. Stay with us. When we come back, we're going to see some of these great inventions from the students of the UTT. Welcome back. It's 15 minutes before the hour of 8 o'clock and we have in studio the youngest and brightest minds in Trinidad and Tobago. They're from the UTT and they have special inventions that they would like to share with us. So we're going to start off with Denzel Joseph and uh, he has uh, some contraption here that looks like animations. So Denzel, over to you. Good morning Trinidad and Tobago. As mentioned, I'm Denzel Joseph, a previous graduate of the University of Trinidad and Tobago in ICT. As such, we know the West Indies cricket is at a level that we once were not or we're not accustomed to. <laughs> so my project basically was to use an ICT tool and to implement a system whereby we can analyze or assess the different types of spin bowling, like leg spin and off spin. Because this is haptics, it can measure the distance and positions of the finger on the ball as well as the movements so as to create a training program for like amateurs and professionals to enhance their level of cricket in the sport as a whole. Great work. Let's see how it works. So for example, if you notice 
my hand, it maps all my positions right. from the finger. So if they created a, a, um, a te spinning technique, we'll right. capture the data and analyze it to see what was effective from what was not. Right. It is limited only to the finger positions as now. As now. Yes, correct. Right. What about the body movements and so on? You're going to have to, to map those as well. Well, this is a um, small, of, small picture of the larger view then, whereby right. we only analyze this glove, which is limited only to the finger movements. Okay. But to enhance, we could create sensors to the, whole, the body. To whole arm and body as well. Correct. Right. Now, can this be applied to anything other than sport? Yes, of course. Right. Like what? Well, haptics, as for example, these gloves are applied in um, animation purposes, like, for example, when you're creating 3D images or cartoons, Excellent. characters, you could mi mimic the whole human body on Great. Term, a visual. Great stuff. Well, that's Denzel. Denzel, that's your stuff. Um, let's hear from Kimmy Wharton. Well, I'll just show a quick viewing of Kimmy's project that she created. Mm -hmm. It was um, a 3D image of uh, a virtual village, which was the... the Amerindians, basically, it was a tool to use for aid in teaching to analyze a different method for teaching whereby it was proven that it's more effective at times in certain instances to the regular teaching of just verbal and stuff like that. Right. She can just give you a quick demonstration of the um, 3D village. Right, and this is not Farmville we're looking at here. No. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. And these artifacts are genuine artifacts. It's not artifacts mm -hmm. that she created then. Right. So it's like a museum in 3D. Right. Which, which is used as a learning aid then. So this can be placed on a website uh, which can then be accessed via the website. Correct. Right. So you can in fact... Now how do you actually create these images? <laughs> well, as she did it, it's all about um, using a 3D tool programming and creating the image and putting them together like after she take pictures of the artifacts itself right she have to put these pictures into a graphical design right based on the programming and the um mapping of these images onto the software right so it is it is the to get the historical accuracy she will then in fact take a lot of pictures of the actual Correct. artifacts and so on Correct. all right great great stuff kimmy um let's hear from nigel nigel, nigel charles yeah. great what's your stuff about Right, my project is basically providing security for laptop devices. Uh -huh. Right, so as you can see here, as how it basically works right now, the certain keys on the keyboard are disabled. Right, and right now the video camera is on, so it's actually recording audio and video. Right, and this information is then stored on the on the computer itself, and as well emailed to the user, to user account. Right now, as you can see, it's currently waiting for the user to enter his or password. Once the password is entered correctly, right, the software minimizes and. It could go about you doing a normal activity, right? If the password entered wrongly, right, the, the video that was captured is email as well as together with GPS positioning. That's the way laptop is at the point in time, right? right? And this information is sent to your account, and you could use the longitude and latitude coordinates to pinpoint where uh, you are at the point in time in Trinidad itself. So you could actually go on Google Map mm -hmm. and check to, to see where you are, the street, and everything, right? And I could just show you a little um, quick. Uh huh. Right. Let's have an image that I took earlier. Right. Right. And here is an image that was taken by me. You can see it's actually still mirage, just now. So whatever happens, yeah. if if these devices are stolen, we can actually locate them. Yeah. Um, using the GPS um, locator and so on. Yeah. It uses, right. it uses the um, Wi-Fi drive from the computer to provide that service. All right. Okay, great stuff, Nigel. Um, I'm sure that will come in very handy for the, um, the first summer laptop project. Uh, Naomi and Hi. Um, let's see what your project is about. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Hello, good morning. My name is Shadi Collins, and I'm a final second year student in the UTT animation course. During the course, it engages and it introduces students to the different fundamentals that they will need in order to create the same animated movies that you see on television and during films. It also it allows us to involve and use programs such as Toon Boom animation, such as engage us in 3D programs such as Ultra Maya in order to create the same animations that you see. 
Right, so you, we can actually use this 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 stuff to to what? Create movies? To create movies, create shorts, create anything you you could imagine. So it can be used to do advertisements as well, yes. short ads and so on, and we can show them on TV six. Yes. How expensive is this process um, in terms of the, the consumption of time and so on, and, and the skills involved, etc.? Well, with regards to animation, you really need the skill and you really have to have the passion in order to create the animation. Mm -hmm. But once you have the skill and once you have the talent and the passion to do it, it is easy, it's very creative to make the animations that you see. All right, Rashad and Yumi, that's great work. Do we have, we have one other demonstration and we're going to see that right now. We just have about two minutes. So, Naomi, you're going to do this demonstration. Yeah. Okay, great stuff. You go ahead. Good morning, my name is Naomi and this is Chloe. Hi, we represent good morning. Good morning. We represent the Department of Visual Communications and Design. Great. This, um, this program is one of the most exciting and challenging programs that prepares us for the advertising industry. A lot of people may think that the work we do is simple and may require little to no effort, but mm -hmm. on the contrary, we actually are pushed daily to, our creative thinking is pushed daily to come up with new different interesting ideas so we are constantly trying to grow and expand our creative thinking great stuff so what are what give me some um, things that you have done these are some boxes that we created for aqua clean uh -huh. so right um, package and, design. and those package are design. those are your package designs yes, and so on these are yeah. our package designs yes we also have some caricatures that were created right great work uh, those might be who? This the Kardashians? <laughs> <laughs> this would be Mr. Bean and this would be Avril Lavigne. Oh, very good. <laughs> Looks familiar. We also have a lino block printing which was done to be placed on a calendar. Uh huh. Great. And one more. We have time for one more. <laughs> we have the corporate systems here where we do stuff for businesses that they would regularly use, such as letterheads. We have the logo, the call card. Great. And receipt books. Great work. Folks, we're out of time. Now listen, I would like you to really give yourselves a round of applause. This is great work that you've been doing. Excellent work. The studio is filled. You've been here on Morning Edition. The whole of Trinidad and Tobago knows about your good work. Congratulations. Keep it up. And we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with the news. Stay with us. You're viewing Morning Edition on TV6.